news from away with your news anchors, Jimmy and Seamus O'Toole. How's she going, my son? Our top story? Alberta plans to tax visiting NHL players to help the financially strapped Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames. If the tax does not generate enough money, after each game, any teeth found on the ice will be auctioned off on eBay. <laughs> Switzerland has finally joined the United Nations. To maintain its image of neutrality, the country has decided to sit in council, but they won't vote on anything. <laughs> Switzerland also named their official ambassadors to the UN. The Ricola guys. <laughs> Jean Chrétien has now publicly addressed the continuing infighting between Alan Rock and Paul Martin. Today, the Prime Minister referred to the two men as Canada's axis of stupidity. <laughs> Prime Minister Chrétien was in Australia for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. At a dinner when someone said, throw another shrimp on the barbie, our Prime Minister nominated Tony Blair. <laughs> the name Enron has finally been taken off Enron Field, home of baseball's Houston Astros, and it will be replaced with a new sponsor's name. Possible new sponsors for the stadium are Lens Crafters Glasses in About an Hour Field, <laughs> Kibbles and Bits Field and Swiffer Stadium. Actress Anne Hesch became a mother last week, giving birth to a seven-pound bisexual. <laughs> Baby's doing fine and looking forward to spending most of its adult life in therapy. Here's a picture of the baby with mom and dad. <laughs> Prince Edward is quitting his job as a documentary producer so he can spend his full time tending royal duties, such as waving, accepting bouquets of flowers, and getting into tabloid scandals. <laughs> Whether this is the right move is uncertain, but one thing is for sure, Prince Edward looks like director Ron Howard. <laughs> British Columbia is experiencing an infestation of pine beetles. The beetle, distinctive to the province, burrows into a tree, works for an hour, and then goes for a coffee break at Starbucks. <laughs> the Alberta teacher strike has left teachers bitter towards the Ralph Klein government. They vow when they return to class, they'll get on teaching the three R's. Razzing, ridiculing, and ripping Ralph. <laughs> In Cuba, U.S. military officials say not only are Taliban prisoners being treated properly, some of the terrorists have signed a deal for a new Fox TV show. Guantanamo Baywatch. <laughs> British scientists have created a cane inspired by bats to aid blind people. Here we see a visually challenged man with a conventional cane. And here we see the same man with the bat cane. <laughs> Quebec is going to recognize marriages for gay couples. This can mean only one thing. It's wedding bells for Bonhomme Carnival. <laughs> The Canadian Alliance leadership vote is fast approaching. That's the topic of tonight's Point Counterpoint, our in-depth exchange of opinion. The Alliance needs Stockwell Day. Stockwell Day is a washed-up has-been. Yeah, you're right. And that's news from away. Welcome to Crocodile Hunter, and thanks for your get well cards. That's the last time I moon a hungry crocodile. <laughs> Today, we're in Queensland, Australia, to get a look at a rare, totally bizarre, oddly coloured creature with strange, often unexplainable habits. I'm talking about the scary Reptilicus Regina. Him, him, him. A hell by the cloud. This rainforest reserve well and truly open. <laughs> Crikey, isn't she a beauty? Better not get too close or she might snap at me. Just look at those razor-sharp teeth. Who is this man? She may look delicate, but don't be fooled. She's a born killer and she's got very tough skin. Let's see if we can get closer. <laughs> Could someone have this man shot? Never try this at home. It's far too dangerous. This amazing royal creature is very skittish. That's because it has no contact with the real world. <laughs> and she's always on high alert for her natural enemy, the Camillodile. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Oh. <laughs> you 
spunky. She's a spunky little Sheila. Even though this one is well past her prime. <laughs> this particular species comes from a family that exhibits very unusual behavior. That's because they tend to breed amongst themselves. <laughs> Some of the younger offspring are more prone to drinking and smoking marijuana. Who are you? Oh, crikey. Isn't that a melodious call? Who are you? Now, this one may not be as gag as the rest of the species, but this particular creature is highly revered. In Canada, they even put her head on their 62-cent coin. <laughs> Who'd want an ugly old thing like that on their money? <laughs> Ooh, hoo -hoo. I think she's had enough of me. Okay, girl, I'm going to leave you alone now. You can return to your natural habitat of castles with fancy guards. So that's our show for today. All things considered, I'd rather be with crocodiles. <laughs> Imagine a world where your greatest fears become reality. No! I'm Joe Rogan. Each week, six contestants from across the country battle each other in three outrageous stunts that are more shocking than seeing Deborah Gray curl naked. It's Canadian Fear Factor. All our stunts are designed and supervised by the same trained professionals who built Montreal's Olympic Stadium. <laughs> Jean Chrétien, Stockwell Day, and Céline Dion were eliminated after an unforeseen incident. We forgot to pick them up at the airport. <laughs> BC Premier Gordon Campbell, you've made it to the final round. If you complete this final stunt, you will be the winner. Your recent downsizing in British Columbia must have left you with a mighty thirst. You have 30 seconds to complete this Canadian cutback cocktail. Well, that's nothing. I've finished off a lot worse than that in 30 seconds. Just ask the 11,000 BC civil servants I laid off. <laughs> Which of the following ingredients do you choose to chug? East Coast fish guts? Quebec biker sweat? <laughs> or roadkill? Well, uh, let's see. Um... Too late. Just like your civil servants, your time is up. You'll have to drink all three. I love this job. Oh. Mm -hmm. Some fish cut. That biker sweat. And roadkill. And just because I can, two Canadian moose test prairie oysters. Back out like a true liberal. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's amazing. Evidently, fear was not a factor for you. No, but digestion was. <laughs> Canadian fear factor. Reality programming that's hard to swallow. Did you hear about John? Oh, poor Gloria, left with nothing. That bastard. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do if Mark corked off. The cheapskates hardly saved up anything to leave me. He blew most of his money on batteries for his crummy pacemaker. You don't have husband life insurance? I used to think that way. Then I found Guaranteed Dead Husband Life Plus from No Bitch Union. <laughs> No, wait, they're called H-A-G Assurance now. Anyway, it's for husbands 40 to 75. So I can make money off my dead husband. What's the catch? None. There's no medical. Every husband with a pulse is accepted, and you deal directly with Hag Assurance, so no salesperson will visit. 
so they won't call? Oh, they call all right, non-stop. Usually when I'm changing my depends. <laughs> Premiums start as low as $20 a month, guaranteed hardly ever to increase. In case of accidental death, like inadvertently drinking Javex or tripping over the cord to your life support system. Your coverage will increase five times for your beneficiary, like these two old bats here. If you can afford one of these every day, you can afford Hag Assurance. I think I'll take a world cruise after I plant Mark. Thanks for telling me about Hag Assurance. You can get the bill. Excuse me? Well, I gave you the advice. So Call Hag Assurance toll free for your information kit. Well, Living off your dead spouse has never been easier. <laughs> it's open season on CBC again, and I'm just sick about it. The head of Canwest Global TV says get rid of CBC. Hey! CBC is a national institution. It tells us what's okay to be PO'd about. <laughs> global says they want CBC to eliminate sports, local news, and any program Global might feel like doing because it hurts their revenue stream. That's like White Swan telling Cottonelle to get out of the business so it can wipe up alone. <laughs> Who better to dictate our nation's broadcasting policies than Global, the network that brings us such Canadian shows as Boston Public and NYPD Blue. <laughs> Global's main cultural contribution to television is it's the only Canadian network whose weather forecasts are delivered by someone with big hooters. <laughs> okay, so it does have two things going for it. <laughs> but how much does Global put into producing Canadian shows? Oh, not much aside from the Santa Claus Parade. Okay, three things. <laughs> Well, now the National Post is running almost daily editorials saying, sell CBC. I tried to cancel my subscription, but they just kept delivering it anyway. <laughs> Good thing. It turns out to be my budgie's favorite paper. <laughs> and then there's this wacko liberal MP, Roger Galloway. He thinks only elites watch CBC, and he says, how many people are watching CBC? I want to find out. Well, how about all us elites let him know? You have your maid or butler send him a note. Roger Galloway, MP, Ottawa, K1A0A6. And as for Global and the National Post, both coincidentally owned by the Asper family, well, thanks for your concern. But when it comes to choosing what should be on our airwaves, I'd rather trust 30 million Canadians with clickers than a couple of self-serving Aspers. <laughs> Who's a pretty boy? Who's a pretty boy? Mr. Speaker, in light of his gross mishandling of the situation regarding our troops in Afghanistan, will the defense minister stand up and resign? Speaker recognizes the member for York Center and the Dimwits. <laughs> Speaker recognizes the member for York Center. Speaker, uh, my boss, laryngitis, sorry. Speaker, direct the member to answer the damn question. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I will not resign. It is true that I may not have been aware of some aspects of the Afghanistan mission, like the facts. <laughs> but, but look, it, I, I still have the complete support of every member of the Liberal Party. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, does the minister know or not know what is going on with our military? Do I know what's going on? <laughs> hey, I've seen Black Hawk down three times. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I probably shouldn't be telling this to the House, but we have a lot of troops on the ground in Abu Dhabi, uh, Armenia, <laughs> al uh, What's that place named after a dog? Uh, Beagle Land. No, that's not it. And anyway, Mr. Speaker, Afghanistan. We have troops in Afghanistan, in the town of Candy Bar. <laughs> and, and their job is to protect the local candy harlots and, and candy weenies. <laughs> Granted, our troops do not have the proper desert uniforms, but for safety reasons, each and every soldier is fitted with one of these. <laughs> Speaker, will 
will the defense minister tell us exactly how many troops we have over there? I can do that. I can do that. Okay, we already had 750 there, and uh, I'm sending 130 more, so that's going to be way over 1,000. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, is the minister a slow learner or what? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Is that multiple choice? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, exactly when did the member find out our elite JTF2 troops took prisoners? Look, don't, don't you give me a hard time. I have people working for me with guns. <laughs> Speaker says answer the question. Mr. Speaker, I'm aware of everything our R2-D2 unit does. <laughs> The truth is, we never did take prisoners. We handled it the Canadian way. We took applications for prisoners. <laughs> the captured Al-Qaeda and Taliban members were required to fill out questionnaires with, I might add, some very difficult questions. It'll be at least six months to process the paperwork before we can let them know that they are indeed prisoners. <laughs> a ludicrous process. Thank you. <laughs> and it won't be long before we start issuing those prisoners with welfare checks and Canadian passports. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, how can the minister justify the fact he lied to the country? Well, the same way you do. Uh, I'm a politician. <laughs> And this here's my sister, Doris. Y'all can call me Mrs. Babs. Have you recently lost a loved one or even a family member? Then Pa and me have got a great service for you. Ma and Pa Babs Body Burnatorium. That's right, friends. If you have a body you won't incinerate it, throw it in a truck and bring it down to Ma and Pa Babs Burnatorium. <laughs> we'll burn it up real good. Not like those Georgia Burnatorium in the news. And try to hide the stiffs in the owl house. We take good care of your beloved carcasses, and we use only high octane. None of that cheap, unleaded crap. And we get fast service. <laughs> Uncle Fred's done! At Mom, Pop, Bab's Body Burnatorium, we burn the whole body, lock, stock, and naughty bits. That's right, Mom. Just order our deluxe burning, and we ignite your loved one one organ at a time. And stick around afterward for our catered barbecue. <laughs> when you take advantage of Mom, Pop, Bab's Body Burnatorium service, you will receive a state-of-the-art Machine crafted urn. <laughs> and in case of a bus accident, we use one of these. So remember, Mom, Pa, Bab's Body Burnatorium, where we treat your loved one with dignity. Pa, do you smell something burning? Oh, I'll well, wait till the last minute. <laughs> Hello, I'm Paul Martin. Today, I'm going to make history. I'm putting up government money that says I know more than you. So, if you're smart enough, fast enough, we'll see if you have the guts to win Paul Martin's money. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, it's my money, and I can audit you. Okay, we'll see if today's contestants are devious enough to win Paul Martin's money. Let's meet our challengers. First is Quebec Premier and Le Grand Winer, Bernard Landry. Bonjour. Quebec is in dire need of more federal funding. Same old, same old. Next contestant is Ontario Education Minister Janet Ecker. The Ontario education system is grossly underfunded. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. And rounding out the panel, some homeless guy. Can you spare any change? I'd like some food. Let's get to the categories. They are NDP leaders who aren't incompetent. Roll out the pork barrel. People in Ontario who have been harassed. Is Alberta in decline? And finance ministers who should be prime minister but can't be because the present one won't take a hint and step down. 
Okay, Janet Ecker, pick a topic. Is Alberta in decline? For $200, what rodent has been banned from the province of Alberta? Lawyers. I hate lawyers and their legal briefs, too. Well, we'll give you a correct answer, even though we were looking for rats. <laughs> Pick again. Give me people in Ontario who have been harassed. For $150. Homeless guy. I'm not homeless. I'm residentially challenged. <laughs> you rang in. I, I did? Rang in again. Did I win? Is there food? For $150, who will replace conservative leader Mike Harris now that he is retiring? A conservative who is sleazy, underhanded, opportunistic, of questionable morals, and is only in it to further their own personal interests. Well, that could be anyone in your party. Can you be more specific? I refuse to answer on the grounds it may tend to get me kicked out as education minister. <laughs> Well, it looks like this charade is over, and none of our contestants have won Paul Martin's money. What about my $200? Oh, you have as much chance of getting it as I have becoming Prime Minister. <laughs> and that's it for Win Paul Martin's Money. This is Martin.